Hey, and welcome to my channel about living in and moving to Denver, Colorado. Name one person that doesn't like free stuff. So if you're new to Denver or if you already live here, everyone loves activities in Denver. And so we're gonna be covering free things to do all around the Denver metro area. Let's get started. I'm Katie Martineau, also known as The Real Estate Gal. If you're interested in learning all things about Denver, you gotta subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get notified every time I release a video, which is twice a week. And as mentioned, my little tagline is Katie The Real Estate Gal. I am a licensed real estate agent in this state, so if you need help with buying, selling, or anything in between, I'm your gal. Here's my contact information, so you gotta reach out, and I would love to help you. In the meantime, let's get into those free events that are all around the Denver metro area. The first one we're gonna be discussing is the First Friday Art Walk. So the first Friday of every single month, artists and galleries are open to the public. So people will get their friends and they'll be walking about these districts. So Santa Fe Art District is one, Rhino, as well as Arvada. You can get a big group of people together and just hop from gallery to gallery. It's a really great way to meet local artists, buy local things. And you wouldn't necessarily know that there's even art galleries in some of these places unless you stop by for this free art walk. Even some of the artists have wine and cheese and they love to just get into conversation and talk about their artwork. So it's a great way to shop local and if you don't know about the art walk if you drive down any of these districts on first Friday you're gonna know about it because it seems like hundreds of people walking amongst the streets enjoying the different designers and pieces The second is the 40 West Arts Line. This is a really interesting one. It's a green, like a kind of a lime green line that is painted on the ground. And there are a ton of different murals, installations, and sculptures along the route. You can walk it, bike it, or even drive by it. And there's a really cool kind of scavenger hunt type map that you can see all of the different artists and all the different murals. This trail is about four miles and it goes from West Colfax near Wadsworth to Kip it's a really great thing to do with the family and you can stop at local shops along the way to support local businesses as well. It's one way to showcase the creative spirit of Lakewood community, highlighting the importance of public art in urban spaces. I found out about this 40 West art line from a nonprofit that I was volunteering for and I found out that a little bit of tax dollars go into preserving art and culture in different neighborhoods in Denver. So on a sunny day, instead of walking around a lake such as Sloan's Lake, try the 40 West art Arts line in Lakewood. It's only a couple miles away and you're gonna see some really cool pieces of art. Another free thing to do that Denver has a ton of is free outdoor movies in the park. There are a ton of participants for this, such as Infinity Park, which is actually where the Raptors play. A lot of people don't know that Colorado has a rugby team. And so at Infinity Park is where they typically play. And there's an outdoor area that they set up one of those giant blow up screens and they have food trucks. There's also Edgewater Public Market that has an outdoor theater. The Town Center Park Auditorium in Green Valley Ranch and the South Green in Central Park to name a few. It's best to look up the schedule because some of these don't have a consistent weekly or monthly schedule. Sometimes they're a little bit sporadic. So it's a great thing to do with the family if you want to grab a picnic basket, a blanket, maybe some snacks, a thermos full of wine perhaps, and enjoy the ambiance of being outdoors while watching a good movie. This one always sneaks up on me. It's the Denver Chalk Art Festival. It's held over a weekend in June and people that are international or local come about and they do these amazing murals on the ground near Larimer Square. So they close off the streets and artists have a couple days to just draw these absolutely gorgeous chalk art installations. And since artists are international, there's different styles. One of my favorite styles was almost a three-dimensional where you actually felt like you were gonna fall down a hole if you weren't paying attention. But you get to walk amongst the streets and see artists doing their thing. And it's one of the most perfect Instagrammable moments that you're gonna find during the summer. If 
If you like performances and concerts, the Levitt Pavilion is a newer venue that is located in the Ruby Hill neighborhood. They put on a summer concert series featuring a diverse lineup of local and national musicians performing a wide range of music genres, including rock, pop, jazz, blues, and a ton of other things. And they just got a new sound system. So if you've been there before, try it again because the sound is gonna sound so much better. One of my favorite things to do in the summer is jazz in the park. This one's a consistent every single Sunday in City Park, it's 330 acres that essentially is in the center of the city. Hundreds if not thousands of people gather to listen to jazz musicians. There's the lake right in the center and there's a venue that overlooks the lake and you can actually see the Denver Nature and Science Museum in the background. And even if you're not near where the musicians are playing, they amplify the sound so well. There's food trucks everywhere. People bring, again, picnic baskets, blankets. Some people will bring volleyball courts and they'll have kind of a potluck style. Dinner, some people bring beer and wine. You do have to watch out for parking here because there are so many people. Parking is pretty tricky. So I would recommend carpooling or if there's an electric scooter, potentially calling an Uber because you don't want to be circling the block and completely miss the music. But it is from about six to nine o'clock every single Sunday during the summer. All right, going back to the artistic side and murals, the Rhino Mural Tour is a pretty cool one and you can do this one year round. It's a self-guided tour and Rhino, which is just north of Coors Field, really close to downtown Denver. There is a diverse range of style and technique that you'll see on the sides of buildings and in alleyways. Sometimes driving down some of the streets in Rhino, it's just be like, oh, wait a second, I haven't seen that one yet. Some of the artists get really creative as well as super super duper colorful so it catches your eye. And the coolest thing to do is to take your time and walk the trail. Like I mentioned, it's a self-guided tour so there is a little bit of a map that can guide you through so that you don't get lost. And then on your tour, you can stop at some of the local places such as Il Posto has some really great, unique Italian dishes. There's Corvus Coffee for a cup of coffee. Or if you wanna stop for a beer, there's a ton of different breweries like Epic Brewing or Monkey Theorem. You can't walk with alcohol, but at least you can get a a little bit of buzz going on and then enjoy the art. Another really cool thing that I found, if you haven't heard of geocaching, it's almost like a scavenger hunt. There is an app for it. There actually used to be a small GPS that gave you coordinates and then you have to go find this tiny little thing called a cache. The cache, C-A-C-H-E, can be all sorts of different sizes, but there's a little sheet of paper in the inside that you write your essentially like username and then the date that you found the cache. And it's funny because some people don't even know that this exists, but in Rhino, there's actually a fair amount of caches. You would walk right by it if you had not a clue what, you're, what I'm talking about, but I would highly recommend looking into this if you like scavenger hunts or being amongst nature. This is just really cool because it's in a city that hundreds of people walk by and they don't even know that this this little game exists. There's not really a winner of the game. It's just really fun to find a cache after you've been given some clues. So I found some really cool ones in Rhino, which is why I brought it up. So you could find caches along the route of the murals as well. The one thing that I always look forward to in the summer is floating the Platte. So the Platte River runs through downtown and more south. And so what people will do is they'll get rafts, tubes, really anything that floats. And they'll start at, let's just say point A. Everybody will get in their raft or tube or whatever it is. And you could totally go solo, but some people like to connect and even have an inner tube that has a floating cooler in it. And then just drink beer or seltzer, whatever your drink of choice is and then just let the water take them down the river. There's even man-made rapids, which they're not like extreme rapids by any means. Like whitewater rafting is definitely a thing in Colorado. This is very, very minimal compared to that. It's more so just a little concrete slide that the water flows over. So when COVID was a thing and we're supposed to be outside social distancing, 
The tubes, once people realized what season it was, were completely sold out at all Dick's Sporting Goods and any sporting store really. And then they were on back order at Amazon. So if you weren't quick enough to buy the tubes, you either had to be creative or borrow one from a friend. What I would recommend with this is to all pile into one car with your tubes. I mean, you could blow them up, but you're gonna fit more people if you don't have them blown up. Have that person bring you to point A, float down the river, make sure you have a waterproof bag to put the keys in because if you lose them, they are gone. Then you float down the river and you have a car or two at the bottom. And I mean, you can go for a couple hours, but if you have a car at the bottom, they could essentially drive you back to point A, either pick up that car and take off for the day or keep floating down the river. There's even some people that will try to, it's not wakeboarding, it's a type of surfing, I guess, but there's some rapids near the REI that's downtown Denver. So you're gonna see some kayakers or people trying to ride the waves or to ride the rapids. I wouldn't recommend paddle boarding this because the river can pick up, but you do want to look up the water levels before you go. If the water levels are too low, then the bottom of your tube is gonna scrape the bottom of the river. And if the water levels are too high I believe that they close off the river so that you can't float down because of safety reasons but floating the plat is definitely something fun to do in the summer if you haven't already gathered I love supporting small businesses and local businesses so farmers markets are where it's at and that is one of the best ways to support local. Some vendors will come from across the state to sell their product, and there are so many farmer's markets to choose from. There's the Cherry Creek Fresh Market, South Pearl Street, Union Station, Stapleton, City Park, Lowry Beer Garden, Littleton, Boulder County, Arvada. And it's not just fresh fruits and vegetables. There's also other vendors. There's small bakers that sell cookies. Fashion trucks are super popular where it looks like one of those big box trucks and you can actually go on the truck and shop clothes and jewelry and wallets. And then they have the tiniest itty bittiest little changing station you've ever seen. There's typically always a local coffee shop that has a tent there. And sometimes depending on the event, there's beer and wine sold. So it's not just fresh produce there's also goods as well one of the cool trucks that I found last year was little dog biscuits and they were all cookies almost like a decorated sugar cookie and there was a glass partition almost like a little bakery and then you could get your dog little different like truffles cookies cakes danishes I hadn't seen that one but there was a statistic that I saw that there are more dogs than there are kids in the Denver metro area which kind of blows my mind a little bit some people love to take their dogs everywhere one cautionary thing that also stuck out to me was that in the summer for Colorado it can get pretty hot and if there is a farmer's market that is on gravel and like kind of a black top the heat that radiates from that can heat up your animal so much more than it does for humans so just really please be cautious so that your animal doesn't overheat and potentially get sick from it but on a beautiful day you're gonna see every other person with their pet with them All right, I feel like that's a really great list to start for the free events that are around the Denver metro area. If you wanna get notified the next time I release a video, which there will definitely be another video about free events because I found so many when I was researching. So you gotta hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you get notified every time I release a video. And if you're moving to Colorado or even if you already live here, I would love to help you with your real estate needs. But you have to reach out via phone or email and we could talk about the best places for you to look based off of your lifestyle and the things that you love to do like these free events. All right, we'll see you next time.